we're still in the early stages of the pandemic. Cargo ships are unloading for the benefit of us all living here. My friend Simon here offered me half of a giant salami he discovered. He's originally from Finland and a big fan of Winded Voyage. A cruise ship and superyacht anchored in the bay, but no one came ashore, and there were different stories about who was aboard these ships. Looks like money can buy you a superyacht, but it doesn't seem it can buy its way into the country. Eventually they left. Ciao. Well, here we have a little update on the coronavirus here in uh, Mindelo, San Vicente, Cape Verde. There's been a case that's been uh, discovered and 100 people or so are in quarantine. So they seem to have the situation in hand and everything's pretty shut down and uh, everybody's pretty much respecting it, everything, but um, it's kind of strange. Cape Verdean people are so sweet, so, so social and everything. To see them all locked up in, inside is just almost you know, abnormal and, and cruel, you know. I brought food to Pesh, lots of stuff we'd got to take on our canceled rescue mission. So what's happening here in Bella Vista? Well, look at that. Pesh just added an extra room to his place. Now he's just adding the electricity. He's gonna make a kitchen here, room here, and Casa de Bani. Uh-huh. Well done, Pesh. <laughs> then I went to visit some like-stranded friends. Coronavirus with the Germans. <laughs> Two Austrians, one Swiss, one Nazi, and one German. <laughs> Guess who he is? <laughs> no, he's not like that. Five sailing boats and one Bavaria. Yeah, yeah. He has a Bavaria. It's not his fault. And my nipples are not longer getting hard. So if everybody could give me a solution for my problem, please tell me. So who says Germans don't have a sense of humor? There's some sailing friends who are stuck in quarantine and they just sent me a message and told me what's happening and they're just out of here. They said, can you just please float some down to us because they're just a few hundred meters away down there. So I came up with a little quick solution and I think we can float some down. The fender. Some beers, line, another line, and I could toss them, another line to retrieve, and hopefully they'll have the, some beers for tonight. My generous effort to this whole crisis pandemic, pretty lame, I know. Here we go. I had asked the police patrolling the harbor if it was okay to deliver to my neighbors downstream, or perhaps they would prefer delivering. But they urged me along, and I promised to keep a safe distance. This beautiful catch is Dutch, and it came about two weeks ago. It belongs to Akko and his wife. They've been here two weeks, and it took them a week to sail down from the Canaries. Obviously, they did not provision enough beers for a sudden pandemic. I later brought them some cash they transferred into my account so they could buy fish off fishermen and other deliveries. There were four other sailboats in pretty much the same circumstances, except some had children aboard. Well, there we go. I just helped out some fellow sailors from Holland, Akko, and uh, his wife brought him over some beers. Guys have been stuck. They've been at sea 21 days or so. They came down from the Canaries and then came here, and they've been here for like almost two weeks. So, so the poor people should, uh, should be allowed to go to land, hopefully, eventually. So we'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find get any information for them tomorrow. Today I'm moving into the marina uh, because a friend of mine named Norbert lost his boat. It's just total, it's done. And he offered me his spot. Out of generosity, yes, but also Perhaps because um, I offered to go and help his boat when it was still salvageable. And we were to go the day that they put the lockdown in place. And so we had food ready and a crew ready to go. And uh, 
he was gonna do whatever he could to salvage whatever he could out of his boat and maybe even salvage it out of the rocks and was unable to in the end and now the entire boat has been destroyed and pillaged and and there's nothing left and since he paid until the end of June he was kind enough to give me his space at Marina Mandelo so Pesh and I are gonna be moving it today and uh, thank God to Pesh who I can always count on and uh, I'll be staying at the marina so I don't know if we'll be able to have as much fun at the marina because everything is kind of in a lockdown there and it's private and it's a little bit you know tight security but hopefully I can you know invite some friends and make them some food and have a little you know fun and whatever okay this is this is day day we don't know what day it is of the coronavirus pandemic lockdown and what do we do here we make food, so I made them beef stew. The girls love it. They've been camping out here for a while, just to stay away from anything, and because we make good food. I like that company. <laughs> it's up. This, this little country is just so full of life and has survived so much. You know, already famines and diseases and colonialism and. <laughs> they still in a way thrive but they're also poor and they, they have to you know really survive here so my heart goes out to all of them I love them dearly hopefully they'll get through this no it's not even hopefully that they'll get through this they will get through this they're just too resilient they're just too cool and uh, we will get through this because now I'm kind of part of them myself I'm not Cape Verdean but uh, <laughs> some of them do call me Criolo which is one of the kindest compliments anybody from here can, can make me. Well, here I am in the comfort of Marina Mindelo. It's a real game changer for me in Gallopan. Shore power, water, and the luxury of a hot shower. Mooring here is an acquired skill. It took me a few days to figure out how to secure Gallopan. Strong winds heal the boat from side to side, and tides and swell bounce you like a trampoline. But I had plenty of room around me. Norbert had the best spot in the marina. Too bad the floating bar wasn't open, so close and yet so closed. The population was allowed to go out to get essential. I'm not drunk here, the pontoon moves under you like an earthquake. The marina was dutifully guarded 24 hours a day by men like Tiet here. He's happy about this crisis. He gets to spend more time on his farm because he doesn't have to work weekends at the discotheque. Mindelo, which is usually live with music and children's laughter, was eerily quiet. No more ice cream, no more sports bar, and certainly, no more events and parties. A few stores were open, food stuff mainly, as well as to-go meals. These streets are the main thoroughfares of the city, packed with people during recurring celebrations. Now there's just taxis, buses, and a bike here and there. And this is Rua Lisboa, the main street of the city. It was packed with thousands during New Year's Eve. People were overflowing into the side streets. Yep, the cultural capital of Cape Verde was quiet. Yet you could almost hear the lament of Morna music. Cesaria Vora's song, Soldad, was never so apropos. And here is Praza Estrella, also known as the African Market. I love this place as it is bustling with activity. Here they fix just about anything from clothes to electronics, and where you can get good deals from fresh produce to a new mobile phone, as well as bussing to all parts of the island. Back at the marina, there's about 15 of us in the same boat, and we're in pretty good company. This is Willy's boat, and singing is Christoph from Austria, 
as well as Norbert. <laughs> They're singing a song about traveling free of borders. Then luckily we were blessed with a new friend, Jody from England, with another set of tunes, and with Lily, whom we're just hanging out in my boat. Like they say here, Brigada Deus. Thank God we're here. Couldn't get even without a sound. It's not how 